weight. We're going to talk about weight today, the simple word weight for, I think it needs a deep consideration. Sometimes you can miss blessings and miss the direction of God by not properly understanding a translation. It can make a big difference in your life. So this lecture we're going to set aside for that one word, weight. We're going to understand it. You know, in English, sometimes it means to put off. Let's just wait a while. Let's just put it off a while. Well, it's important in the Hebrew for you to know what the word meant in the original text in a few places of God's word. Open your Bibles, if you would, to the Old Testament, the great book of Isaiah, chapter 40. We're going to start off a little slow, considering our father. What kind of father do we have? And how, what is our relationship with him? And how do we receive his blessings? Basically, that's what it is at the root of this reading. Verse 10 of chapter 40, the great book of Isaiah, and a word of wisdom from our father in Yeshua's name, and it reads... Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand. He's not coming as a wimp. A strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work be for him. You'll remember that Christ said, How happy I will be if I find my, the fire already kindled of his work. So naturally, that's what God's people are to be doing. Verse 11, he shall feed his flock. He's not going to let them starve for wanting knowledge. Like a shepherd, he shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. He will, with consideration, take you at your limits of absorbing the great food that he has for you in his word. And he will touch you and anoint you with the knowledge and wisdom if you love him and if you do it his way. He is in charge. He, you know, when you think about, you don't want to wimp for a father. You don't, how would you feel if your father said, boy, that's Satan, we're going to have a terrible time. I just hope I can take him. You know, that'd be a frightening thought, wouldn't it? That'd get your attention. He's not the least bit concerned about that. As a matter of fact, he's given you, if you exercise the authority power over Satan, whereby you don't have to put up with stuff like the little ones who are singing, hey, take names, kick dragon, all right? No big deal to it unless a person allows it. Verse 12. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. Now think about those statements. And weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. He knows. He controls. And then there'll be people who say, well, I just hope he can help me. <laughs> if he controls the world and he moves mountains, if he placed every star where it is, and you wonder if he can help you? Really, think about it, all right? 13, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? I don't think there's anyone capable of doing that. As a matter of fact, he has sent you this book of instructions of counsel. And you know what? For free. All you have to do is crack it open and absorb it. And that counsel is there for you to be successful, wise, and to prosper. That's what his will is for you. I don't know, can you do it? You've got to do it his way, and then it becomes rather simple. Verse 14, with whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment. That's to say to have things right, even in your life, justice. And taught him knowledge and showed to him 
the way of understanding. I really don't think he needed anyone. But we sure do. The answer to that, of course, is there's no one more intelligent than your father. And I said your father. And you should be real fond of that uh, thought because it should strengthen you because he wants to share that knowledge and wisdom with you if you will absorb it. 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. You know, and people, Christians, that follow him will say, I just wonder if he could help me do this little chore. Ask him to move a mountain, that's to say a nation. Ask him to correct a nation to straighten out a nation. Get up where the horsepower is and don't have doubts that he can't straighten your case out. You may not like the way he straightens it out, but he'll straighten it out for you if you ask him. In short order at times if he has a need for you. So think about it. Think about it. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. I like this. Do you know what Lebanon is? The cedars of Lebanon are the most choice fire, make the most choice fire for the altar. Huge forest and all the beasts of it wouldn't be enough to make him an offering. You know why? Because that's not the offering he wants. Hosea 6.6 6 documents that. I don't want your burnt offerings. I want your love. That's why I created you for my pleasure. Documentation for that is Revelation chapter 4, last verse. I don't know, have you pleasured him lately? And people want, and then they'll say, I wonder why he never blesses me. Stupidity comes at a low price, I guess. You just have to pick a handful of it anywhere you want to and be stupid in the world. But you have wisdom at hand. You know... Prophecy tells you what tomorrow brings. So you should, if you plan your business for what tomorrow brings, you've got an advantage. And it always comes to pass exactly as it's written if you have received the counsel of Almighty God. If you haven't, hey, bye, sorry. It's there for you. I don't know what you've been doing. That's a good question. Verse 17, all nations before him are as nothing. Don't amount to a hill of beans. And they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. And that word vanity there is tuhu, which is the Hebrew word of the world that was, became tuhu, meaning void and without form. Why? What is it saying? He cares about you. He's not that excited about things. He cares about you. He may not like what you're doing, but he loves you. Verse 18. To whom then will ye liken God? Good question. Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? Now stop and think about that a moment. Some might say, well, boy, I, I, I don't know. Well, what are you made in the image of? What, are, what can you be likened unto? You were made in the image of God and the angels. But as far as power is concerned, that's where it stops. Okay. The only power you're going to have that is lasting is what he has given you and given you the authority to apply it, to be successful in this word and through the Spirit. 19. The workmen, you take these little old men, this is where they work. Workmen melteth a, a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold and casteth silver chains. We're, we're going to make us something fancy. It may even be the altar at the front of the church. Let's just, let's dial it up so people will be awed by physical things. 20. He that is so impoverished, he's so poor, that he hath no oblation, chooses the tree that will not rot. He looks for hardwood. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Man always wants to work his own salvation out when God's got it all set for him. 
easy. But man's got to do it the hard way. Well, I'll get me forty or fifty thousand. I'll lay it back in the bank and get everything set. Then I can stop doing business crooked like or taking shortcuts. Too many, you know, got to pile up the green. Okay. Now is the time. If you want to really be successful, is to be honest in your dealings and do it God's way and prosper. Okay? That means with your family, with your business, with your friends, with your city, with your nation. He set no limits in this chapter. 21. Have you not known question? Have you not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the world? God told you about the foundations of the world. The little word, the little Hebrew word just prior to that too gave you a tip off. Do you know about the first earth age? When was the beginning? A lot of Bible thumpers will tell you it was 6,000 years ago in their ignorance. And they don't know that there was an earth age before this. That's when the dinosaur roamed the plains of this great nation and we find the artifacts thereof. And what happened, Satan's downfall. And then God's replenishing of this earth even in this generate, this uh, earth age. 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Uh, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. This says to do with a compass, the circle, all right? You know... Do you reckon Columbus was worried about falling over the edge if he was a Bible reader? It's obvious this earth was a circle, you know, from God's word. He said it, it's true. Man now knows that. He measured it out. He knows all about it. And it's set forth for us. It, he is in charge. And you are his child. He wants to give you the world as an inheritance. But you've got to do it his way to inherit it, being successful. 23. That bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. He takes politicians and makes duck soup out of them. Allows them, if they're crooked, to even destroy themselves. He doesn't let them get away with it. 24. Yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sown. Their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. You go out here and start trying to find you a religion by whittling something, or making up a bunch of traditions of man, and don't hope it'll be successful, God says, I'm going to destroy it. You go out here and start one of these begging ministries that that's all you can do to, to get by is to beg poor people for money instead of knowing God's blessings are upon you. And God's going to blow it all away. Never going to amount to a hill of beans. God will destroy that that should not grow. Especially if it claims to be of his kingdom or church. 25. To whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? There's, there's just no one to compare our Father to, all right? He's it. Aren't you glad? You bet. Because it's the closest relative you've got. Something else, isn't it? Lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things. What's up high? The stars, of course. Look up at them. Who created them? Who bringeth out this host by number? Millions and millions of them stars. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth, not one missing. They're all there that he intends to be there. It's fantastic, dynamic dynamite okay uh, 27 
Why sayest thou, O Jacob, when Jacob is said it's the natural seed of all the tribes, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Who'd like to say God isn't fair? God just doesn't judge me right. Well, poor baby. You really got it rough, don't you? Why didn't you do what he told you to do? He's going to chastise or correct those he loves. So you better be saying, thank you, Father. Let me get into your word and find out what I did wrong, where I went wrong, what was the lack. Because man is always lacking something. You know, and what's real sad is sometimes we'll gain it and then forget. Especially when you begin to get on in years. I think he excuses that, though. I don't know. Hope so. But um, sometimes we just get forgetful as we get in old age. But what I mean is the power and the promises that he gives you to exercise the authority thereof, and you don't do it, and you want him to feel sorry for you? I don't think so. He told you how to do it in his counsel. And if you won't listen, then poor me baby is probably about right. We're just making friends and influencing people here today, okay? So, but that's the way it is. If he placed every star, take the zodiac, the 12 signs for the 12 tribes, so to speak. Those signs and the things that are given for seasons. 20, he's great. He's in charge. And he's your father. That makes you somebody. A child of God, if you act like it. 28. Hast thou not known, question, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, you know how long everlasting is? That word in the Hebrew means from before there was, basically. And it has no end. Everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not. Neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. Boy, a man just can't cut it. You, we can't imagine. You know, and we sit and we wonder, and that's good, I suppose. It's healthy that we wonder about that first earth age when we find these gigantic fossil beds with creatures that uh, roam this earth that are just huge. And we find and have documented in our television documentaries uh, stumps of, pine, of um, palm trees on mountaintops in, in New Mexico where it's desert. How'd they get there? And we know that dinosaurs, the, the, those that were vegetarians are lived off vegetation because we can tell by their teeth, okay, what, whether they were a carnivore or what have you. That they had those lush foods to graze upon. Or, as you've heard me speak of the mammoth that a friends found up in Alaska that still had, had the flesh on the bones of where the sled dogs partook of it, and he had buttercups in his tummy, in the tundra, under the ice. What are buttercups doing up there? It's all right to think about it. God's in control. When he got angry and destroyed that first earth age, he shook things up, friend. Or one that will really make you think is to go to Nebraska. Ashfall, it's there for you. It belongs to the people. It's a state park. And you won't find anything but animals that we know hab habit uh, uh, Africa. There's camels. Five different kinds of camels. There's rhinoceroses. There's all African birds. And they're petrified and fossilized in Ashfall, Nebraska. How did they get there? And then your mind must go back to why is it that it looks like Africa can fit up against the plates of America and Central America? And things begin, I mean, there you've got fact, all right? You've got something to look at. Everybody should do that. One time, at least, go to Ashfall, Nebraska. And it happened by ashfall from a volcano that erupted in Idaho 
and covered all of the animals at drinking places before carnivores could scatter bones because even the camels, every vertebrae in the tail is still intact as it lies. Something to see. Africa in the middle of America? Whoa, heavy. Yeah, it's all right to wonder. It's all right to ponder. Our Father knows it's really quite simple. And when you take the eons of time to understand the beginning and the end, Verse 29, he giveth power to the faint. That sounds good because we're man, poor little old flesh man is pretty weak, you know. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. He makes the weak strong. He takes some old wimp out here and gives him courage and makes him, teaches him how to kick names, and, to, to take names and kick dragon, all right? I mean, a real person of God, knowing God's going to support him in it. All right, or her. 30. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. In other words, without God's help is what it's talking about. Some young Jasper is going to try to pass an old man 70, and he's going to just run out of breath and faint. The old man 70 is going to just be leaving dust, all right, if he's doing God's work, understand? Fight, run into the battle. Put this in a spiritual context if that's too heavy for you, all right? Um, if you're past 50. <laughs> okay, now this is why we've gone through all of this is the next verse. Hang on to it here, okay? 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. Do what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. That means if you absorb God's truth, spiritually you're never going to be frightened, worried, scared, give out, give up, disgusted. But now we have a, I have a problem with this verse. And that's why we came here and that's why this lecture is is this word wait. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, something that has to do with renewing your strength, you really need to know how to do it. And the verb should be clearly understood. Now, Mr. Webster would tell you that wait means either to put off, be prepared but don't do, and what does wait mean to you in English? It ain't time. We just have to hold back here. Do you know what the Hebrew word is? It's kwa-va. Now, kwa-va is a prime root. It can't be translated any other way other than to mean bind. I said bind. B-I-N-D. Bind even to the extent of twisting together. Now, I don't get weight from that. I'm sorry. I can tear that down for you even further yet, if you like. Qua, uh, the, the word qua alone, but with qua, without qua va in the Hebrew, means a cord. Okay? You know, a string. It can also mean a musical string off of a harp. You know, but it, it's to bind with. Not the weight, as we say in English. So, I think it's very important. Qua is the 19th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's Q, okay? Pronounced ka in the, in the um, uh, to the English tongue, kof. It means qua. And it, either, it even has another meaning, and I don't know what this has to do. It means to regurgitate, I guess because it sounds that way, okay? You know, but nevertheless, be careful when you say qua va because qua ya means to vomit, all right? So I'm, telling, I'm teaching you this because it's a touchy word in the Hebrew, and if you're going to use it, make sure you pronounce it correctly or you could be saying it. You know, the Hebrew is so simple in the Palo Hebrew. Do you know what the qua in Hebrew is shaped like? 
it's kind of, you'd think it was kind of an offset P, but it's, it's kind of like your ear is shaped. And guess what it means? It means ear. Isn't that complicated? Just like A is the ox head, all right? A, a leaf in the Hebrew tongue. It still looks like our A, only it's over sideways instead of standing up. It hadn't changed. You know, language, ling, linguistics are so simple if a person takes a little time. But I think we get in trouble. And the letter that the writers of the King James, the translators thereof, wrote to you, this is a case where I think they were warning you about. We did our best, but you need to be really careful because I don't see but very little connection between weight as we qualify it and give it power in English to bind and entwine yourself with God. That's not waiting, if you ask me. With God in what way? In His Word. In His Scripture. In His life. To be a part of Him. Now let's reread it. And as much as this is how you draw your strength, you're not going to get it waiting, friend. Trust me, you're not going to get it waiting. And then people wonder why God doesn't bless them. But they that wait, they that bind themselves and entwine themselves upon and within the Lord shall renew their strength. That's the qualification. It's not going to happen otherwise. How do I do that? By studying his word chapter by chapter and verse by verse and open your window real wide and take the traditions of men and chunk them out. Get rid of them. And listen to your father, for man is stupid when it comes to the depths of God's word. Don't listen to this man or any other man without checking them out in the word. And never study with a group that doesn't make you think for yourself. Otherwise, it's a cult. I don't care what the denominational name is. If they do all your thinking for you, you're, you're had. Okay. You've got to think for yourself. Study for yourself to show yourself approved because nobody, I guarantee you, nobody is going to stand between you and God on judgment day and God's going to say, why didn't you bind yourself to me? Why did you sit down over there and, well, I was tired and waiting like it said. Well, if you get into the Word with the tools that I've taught you to use, you don't have to do that. You can entwine yourself you remember we were studying in Ecclesiastes on television this week? And what did it say? Two are better than one because if somebody tries to thump the gourd of one of them, two can take him. And then it said three ply cord is stronger than one. And when you bind and entwine yourself, whether it's with music strings, piano wires, or rope, and I'm speaking in a spiritual sense, please understand. To God, it is a prime, you can't work something else into it. That's your verb, go with it. Get as close to God as you can, that's what he wants. Why did he create you? For his pleasure. Unless you let him know you love him and care about him and try to grow in his word, he's not going to do anything for you necessarily. Well, I ask him, so who are you? If you, if you don't even know him, if, you, if you're ignorant of his word, this letter that he sent you that gives you instructions how to be healthy and happy in this flesh body, why should he give you the time of day? The answer is he doesn't. And then people say, oh, woe is me. You bet it is. All right? Why don't you grow up a little bit and mature and stop being the baby sucking a little old bottle saying, I be saved. And get fed from the word of God. Okay? So, as far as I'm concerned, wait. Won't cut. Bind. Okay? I don't, I don't get it. All right. I just think that it's one of those places that Satan would sure like for us to be led down Primrose Lane. You be prepared, bound to God's word, and have God's word entwined within your mind. Whereby you know the reasons we're for. And why of in this world when you face it so that you can reign over it or be supreme to it? 
because you can in being familiar with God's word. This word is not used all that many times in the Old Testament and naturally none in the New because it's Hebrew where the New Testament basically is Greek. And it's used in a way that it makes a fantastic study that could go on and on and we're, well, not all that much on because there's, I, I would dare say it's only used uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 times in the whole Bible for you to bind yourself and it always has to do with the Lord. You could take, uh, they, they lie in wait to take Paul's life. Well, that's a little different word, all right? But this word, the verb of the action of you binding yourself to God through his word and truth, it just went into detail telling you his might and power and how he created all things you know who for? You. Man, I mean, it's out there for the taking. But you got to be smart enough and blessed enough to know how to do it. And you get that in God's word. I want to use another case. Go to Psalms where this word is used. Psalms 25. very short psalm. Poor old David got in a heap of hurt right here. I mean, he got the whole world after him. Old Saul just a nipping at his heels. And he's got trouble. What does he do? 25 verse 1 psalms. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. I put myself in your hands. Do you ever say that to the Father? Think about it. Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. And they're not going to if you listen to the Father. Three, sharpen up for me. Yea, let none that wait on thee. Waiting on God, got it? Be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Now, do you know what that word wait is again? Do you think it means sit down, take a break, ease your pack down, light up if you've got them? No, that's not what it means. It is qua v, which is to say bind those that bind themselves to God. They have a fellowship. They work together. They're not lazy. They do something about it. Can-do type people, not poor me babies. Not a bunch of wimps, okay? Uh, verse 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Well, he has. Have you studied it? That's the question, okay? But David's asking, and he will. If you ask for knowledge, if you have trouble with the scripture, the spirit will touch you. It's a miracle, really. If you do it his way. Five, sharpen up for me again. Lead me in thy truth, not man's, thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. You're the one that saves me eternally. On thee do I wait all the day. Now, do you think that word means sit down on a stump over here and take a break? Uh-uh. It's quava which means bind, entwine yourself. I entwine myself within you, God, to serve you, to understand you, to wait upon you. Remember, verse 6, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been even ever of old. He's always been that way if you're in his will, okay, his way. Otherwise, he'll scorch you, okay? He'll make life kind of hot for you because he loves you and he wants you to straighten your case out. Seven, remember not the sins of my mouth, nor my transgressions according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. In other words, I don't know any of you that haven't got a passel of sins that you sure need him to forget about and to forgive. All right? And that's what David is saying. Boy, I got a bunch of them, David said. Well, God loves to forgive you if you honestly repent. He doesn't want to remember that stuff. Doesn't even want to think about it once you repent. Eight, 
Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. I guess we'll all fit that, won't we? In the path of life, he will teach you as you sin. The meek will be he guide in judgment, making giving them justice. That's to say those that are humble. And the meek will be he teach his way. And his way is the only way, friend. I'm sorry, there is no other way. But to, if you want to find peace of mind and be somebody, this is it. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. Now what did that say? Was that, did that have a qualification or not? Did it say this fits all souls? You can count on it. No, it didn't say that. It said all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such that limits it. Such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. How do you keep them if you don't know them? But uh, I, I don't know. Well, you got trouble, friend. You need to find out. You need to get into his word. It's not that complicated. And did he not promise just in the prior verse, I'll help you if you're just a little bit slow. I'll help you to understand it. I don't care if you're even a sinner. If you'll try to study, I'll make it click in that little old gourd of yours. All right? For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon or forgive mine iniquity, for it is great. Oh boy, Paul kind of did pull some good ones, you have to admit. Twelve. What man is he that feareth the Lord? The word is revere. What man is it that loveth God? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Wow, he choose? God choose. God chooses. Some of you have a destiny and a purpose and you've known it since you were a small child that there was more to God's word than you had been taught and that God had his hand on you. God wants to teach you, but you've got to limber up a little bit and kind of get a little more than some hard-baked clay that breaks every time it hits something and be pliable where God can shape you a little bit and get your gourd fixed up where you think, hey, there's a little bit of room up there because I don't know much of nothing for sure. Well, you should. Okay, you should know a lot for sure from God's word. 13, his soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. His soul, usually when it's brought in, it's a Hebrew, Hebraism that means self. Okay, not only will you do good, but your children even. You're going you're gonna to teach them they're going to follow the right path. You're going you're gonna to be something. Okay, they're going to love you. 14, the secret... This is to say the secret counsel, if you would, of the Lord is with them that fear him. That's to say that love him. Revia is the Hebrew. And he will show them his covenant, meaning he will teach it. You don't have to worry about it. Well, I've heard so many things. Yeah, that's what's wrong. You've let man cloud the picture for you. You've heard so many things. Stop listening to man and get in the word yourself. It's simple. And God simplifies it. Don't let man's traditions confuse you. Well, who said they would teach you if you would get into it? Right there in that verse. He says, I will teach you. I will show you. 15. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. That's to say God will always jerk you out of deception before you allow yourself to get all messed up if you'll pay attention to him. It's a miracle the way God treats his people, really, in life. 16. Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. Oh, Paul was at this time, okay? 17. The troubles of my heart were enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distress. Lead me, God. Do you ever ask him to do that? Hey, if you're unsure, do it. Don't mess around. Say, God, help me. I love you. Help me out of this. And he will. Look, 18, upon mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. He wants to forgive your sins. Hey, wipe them out. Get rid of them. They're gone. Don't ever bring them up again. He doesn't want to hear it. Or you're doubting his ability to forgive. 19, consider mine enemies for they are many and they hate me with cruel hatred. 
Friend, any time you really teach God's word as it should be taught, I guarantee you, you're not going to have all that many friends in the religious community. You might as well get set for that, and if your hide is too tender to take the heat, probably you better not get started. Because I guarantee you, the world doesn't like someone here. Like we tell people on the, uh, national television, God doesn't send out beggars. If somebody comes to you begging for money, they're really not from God. That makes us about as popular as a hair and a biscuit, okay? I mean, a lot of preachers don't like that. But if they're really of God, God will support them or they're fake. I don't care how you slice it, that's the way I see it. Winning friends, influencing people. Sharpen up for me. 20. Oh, keep my soul self and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed. For I put my trust in thee. You know, beloved, I don't know any of us that like or enjoy being ashamed. You know, it, your face turns red. I mean, it hurts. And he'll keep you away from that. 21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. For I wait. This is why I took the whole chapter. For I wait on thee. I bind myself. Entwine myself into your covenants and your practices and your truth. I don't sit down on a stump and say, oh, what or what's next? Move, do something, be a can-do type person, way to go. 22, redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. And hey, you know what he's going to? Okay, I wanted to go... Let's take that 27th Psalm to close this out and we'll just make an, an end to this for it's just one word I wanted to teach you today qua la bind entangle let's to say weave yourself into God's word okay let's take it at the 11th verse okay of the 27th Psalm listen carefully this is where that word is used yet another time Teach me thy way. Do you know something? I, I, I want to tell you, I don't believe all that much in going to man and say, teach me. And here I am a teacher. But basically, I teach you how to study for yourself. At least that's what my aim is. I like to see people think for themselves. I like for people to be smart and be able to see the ways of the world. So ask God to teach you from his word, but you've got to take the word into it. It's like the anointment of wisdom that you place over your eyes and minds that gives you knowledge. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. You know what plain means? That means make it simple for me. Don't make it crooked and hard to understand. Because of mine enemies. I mean, they're always there, and God will give you an advantage of your enemies. Hey... He says, touch not mine anointed. Are you one of his anointed? If you are, God will thump their gourd if they touch you. Good. I mean, real good. If they get in the way of God's word being uh, fulfilled. 20, 12. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. The world loves to lie about you. I thank God no lies have ever been told about me much. <laughs> I guess the Christian re anti-Christian research group likes to lie better than anybody I've ever seen. You know? And, it, and I'm glad we have our page answer to the critics up on uh, our website now that may, we caught them with their britches down and it's all hanging out. Just call it up and look at it, all right? Verse 13, listen carefully. Don't let me sidetrack you here. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Land of living means what? Here. The Lord with you today while you're in that old flesh body. Doesn't smell too good sometimes. Sometimes it cleans up pretty neat. But I mean the Lord can be with you right today. That's the point. And point made. 14. Wait. There's that word. Quava. On the Lord. Be a, bind yourself, entangle yourself within him. 
Be of good courage. You can be strong. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait. There it is again. Quava. I say, uh, say on the Lord. Wait for him. Bind yourself in him. Study his word. Be strong. Be somebody. Have God's blessings upon you. And when, do you know something? He says, I can either bless it or I can blow it away. I don't know. How's your paycheck doing lately, friend? Huh? Has that been blowed on a little bit? Well, think about it. He said he would. Oh, my whole life has been blown upon. Well, better really, better go down and think about getting a retread, a whole, whole restart here, maybe. I jest, we all have those times, friends. There's no, there's nothing happened to you that isn't common to everyone if they allow it to happen. So I felt this was a lot of time to put into one word, but I feel that word is so important. And of course, you know, I, I teach can-do, be a can-do type person for him. Don't, don't be one of these poor me baby wimps. You know, Christians are supposed to be poor. God said he wants you to be rich. You're going to listen to that idiot that said, I want Christians to be poor. You know why they usually say they want Christians to be poor? They want all your money. Okay? That'll leave you poor, all right, won't it? You know, I'm poor some folks that are about ready to meet their maker feel they can buy their way in by some uh, slick-lipped revolving rev that said, I'll guarantee you heaven. They couldn't guarantee you anything. All right? Just winning friends, influencing people. God loves all his children. He's what you need, not some man. Okay? Bind yourself to him, not some man. Entwine yourself in his word and his advice. It's tried and tested. There's nothing new under the sun. All those troubles happened to them. And God said, I, I have it written so you can learn from their mistakes. So you don't have to have all that trouble if you use this. Just a little bit. Okay. You can avoid it. So it's up to you. Okay. Quava. Bind, entwine yourself in his word. On who? On the Lord. And be blessed. That's a promise. It's guaranteed. God will strengthen you and raise you up mentally. Even to a mental giant. Give you a memory that, boy, just great, super. If you're going to use it for his word. Think about it. All right, Father, we thank you for the privilege of being allowed to serve you. Be with us this day, Father. May all these be a blessing to all they come in contact with. We ask it in Yeshua Jesus' precious name. Amen.